Hey there Unmaskers, welcome to my channel Unmask It Now. Thanks for tuning in today. In my earlier video, we went over the checklist of how to configure SSM agent on EC2 instances in public and private subnets that have direct outbound network connectivity to the internet. Click on the link at the top right corner of the screen if you wish to visit that video. However, you could have EC2 instances launched in isolated subnets that have no outbound access to the internet, but you would still like to use SSM to manage those instances. And that's what we'll see in today's video and explore how to configure SSM agent for EC2 instances using VPC interface endpoints. This is what the network architecture would look like. We'll start by creating a VPC and two isolated subnets. By isolated, I mean that the subnets will have no other routes except for the default local route that's used to enable routing within the subnets of that VPC. We'll then proceed to create VPC interface endpoints for SSM. AWS Systems Manager uses three endpoints. The SSM endpoint, which is the entry point or the health check endpoint. The EC2 messages, which enables document execution against managed nodes and SSM messages, which enables the session manager feature with SSM. When an interface endpoint is created, a corresponding network interface with a private IP is created in the chosen subnets. You could choose one subnet, but for high availability, it is preferred that you select a minimum of two subnets when creating an interface endpoint. The traffic flows from the EC2 instance to either of the ENIs for the interface endpoint. It prefers to send the traffic to the ENI created in the same subnet, but because of the local routing, the traffic could go to either of the ENIs. Through AWS private link, this traffic is privately sent to the SSM service that listens on that particular endpoint. The SSM agent is the one that always initiates outbound connection to the endpoints. So for configuring SSM, you do not need to allow any inbound rules on the EC2 instance security group. However, the interface created for the endpoints will need to be attached with a security group that needs to allow TCP port 443 from that instance. Let's switch over to the AWS console. I'm currently in the Sydney region in my AWS console. We'll first start by creating an IAM role. We will use this IAM role and attach it to the instance so that it has the necessary permissions required for SSM. So let me switch over to the IAM console. Click on roles, create a role, select EC2, and then click on next. AWS provides a managed policy for SSM called as SSM managed instance core. So I'm going to select that policy, which has the necessary permissions required for AWS systems manager, and then click on next. I'm going to name this role as EC2 role for SSM. and then click on create role. We will use this role later in the procedure. But before that, let's go ahead and create a VPC. Switching over to the VPC console. I'm going to click on your VPCs, create VPC, VPC and more so that I get the VPC wizard. I'm just going to give a custom name, SSM, leave the IPv4 CIDR block as default, the rest of them as default. Select two availability zones. I do not require any public subnets, so I'm going to click zero. I'm going to use two private subnets. We're not going to use any NAT gateways and no VPC endpoints. And I'm going to leave the DNS settings on the VPC checked. With this settings, let me go ahead and create the VPC. Just give it a couple of minutes to get created. And then go ahead and view the VPC. Now that we're done by creating the VPC and our two subnets, I just want to quickly show you that these subnets are isolated subnets that are created as they do not have any routes for the outbound internet and they only have the local routes. So you can see that it only has the local route here. Similarly, let's click on the other subnet and you can see it only has a local route for the VPC. Next, I'm going to create the security group. This will be the security group that I will attach to the interface VPC endpoints. So this security group will have inbound TCP rule on port 443 allowed from the instance or the VPC side of. 
So let's proceed to create the security group. I'm going to click on the security group tab and then click on create security group. I'm going to name it as security group for the VPC endpoint. You could give it any name that you'd like. And then I'm going to copy the same name in the description. Let me just verify the VPC that we just created. So let me get the VPC ID from another tab. Copy the VPC ID that was just created and paste that here. In the inbound rules, we would need to allow TCP port 443 from the VPC or the instance IP address. I'm going to click on the rule HTTPS. And under custom, I'm going to give the VPC CIDR. You can give any description that you like. Outbound rules, I'm going to leave it as default with all traffic to all IP addresses as the outbound rule, and then proceed to create the security group. Now that the security group is created, we can proceed to create the endpoints for SSM. Switching over to the endpoints console, I'm going to click on create an endpoint. I'm going to name this SSM as that's the first endpoint I will proceed to create and search for that endpoint. So the SSM endpoint format or the service name is ssm.region.amazonaws.com. So I'm going to select that endpoint. Under the VPC, I'm going to select the VPC that we just created and select the two availability zones with the corresponding private subnets that we just created in those two availability zones. Uh, these are the subnets where the interface for these endpoints will be created. This does not mean that the instances that belong to other subnets in the same VPC cannot use these endpoints. So bear in mind that these are the subnets where the interfaces for the endpoints are created. However, any instance from any subnet within the VPC should be able to use the VPC interface endpoint. Under security groups, let me cl click on the security group that we just created and associate that with this interface endpoint. And for the policy, you can create your own custom policy, but I'm going to leave that as default, which is the full access policy and click on create endpoint. So we will use the SSM endpoint first when we launch the instance. The other two endpoints that we will use, I will create them later once we've launched the instance and verify that the instance is registering as the managed node using the SSM health check endpoint. So let me proceed to create the instance. So switching over to the EC2 console. Let's proceed to launch an instance in either of the isolated subnets that we created. So I'm just going to call this Windows instance. I'm going to select the latest AMI, the Windows 2022 AMI. Scroll down and then select the instance type. I'm going to leave that as a default and select the key pair that I just created. For the network settings, I will switch it to the VPC that we've created and select one of the private subnets. And as you can see, since this is a private subnet, there is no public IP that's associated with this instance. And for the security group, I'm going to just leave it as the default security group that gets created with it. And all I need is just the RDP rule. Like I said, for SSM, we do not need any inbound rules specific to SSM. Uh, but all you need is traffic that's allowed outbound. Once that's done, I'm going to make sure that we click on the advanced details and make sure to select the IM role that was created that has the necessary permissions for SSM. Once that's done, click on launch instance. Let's switch back to the EC2 console and wait for this instance to get launched. In the meantime, I'm going to switch over to the Systems Manager console 
so that we can see if this instance successfully registers as a managed node. We can see that the instance state is reporting is running. However, the status checks are still initializing. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to initialize and report as two by two status checks. I've refreshed the console and now you can see that the status checks on the instance have passed. Let's switch to the AWS Systems Manager Fleet Manager console, refresh the page, and you can see that the instance is now reporting as a managed node. And the SSM agent ping status is reporting as online. Using the SSM agent endpoint, you can see that we were successfully able to register an instance as a managed node. However, the SSM endpoint is not sufficient to run any systems manager tasks, particularly if you want to run a document against this managed node, uh, you wouldn't be able to run that only setting up the SSM endpoint. For that, you would need to set up the EC2 messages interface endpoint as well. I can quickly show you how without the EC2 messages endpoint, the document will be stuck in the pending state and will not run. So let's just quickly test that. I'm going to select the instance, click on node actions and click on execute run command. I'm going to select a simple AWS PowerShell script document. Run a simple PowerShell command such as hostname. Select the instance and then click on run. You will see that this document will continue to remain in progress as there is no EC2 messages endpoint that it can contact. So I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes and you can see that the status is pending and the detailed status is delayed. So as you can see, we haven't had much success. The document status is still in progress and it is pending. As you can see, the reason for it is because we don't have the EC2 messages endpoint. So let me switch over to the VPC console, create the EC2 messages endpoint, and then come back and test this document again. So switching over to the VPC console, clicking on endpoints, I'm going to create the endpoint. This time call it EC2 messages. And the service name is EC2 messages. I'm going to select that. Select the VPC and two subnets for high availability and select the private subnets corresponding to that. Select the security group that we created for the VPC endpoint and leave the full access policy as default. Let's switch over to the AWS console. Let's try and refresh to see if the existing command runs. If not, let's proceed to cancel the command and issue a new command, which should definitely work. I'm now going to try to rerun this command now that we've created the EC2 messages endpoint. Let's take a look at the status. We can see that the EC2 messages endpoint is now active. So let me switch back to the SSM console. And you can see that both the commands have executed. So if I look at the command history, you can see that they are now a success. So let's take a look at the output of the command. And you can see that it prints the hostname. So this confirms that the SSM endpoint is the health check endpoint. However, you need the EC2 messages endpoint to actually run any command documents against the managed nodes. Let's now work with the last endpoint for SSM, which is SSM messages. So if I switch to the EC2 console and select the instance and attempt to connect to the instance using session manager, you can see that we're not able to do that right now. This is because we don't have the SSM messages endpoint and the instance has no means to connect to it. So let's sort out this issue by going and creating the SSM messages endpoint and let's come back and test this again. So switching to the VPC console, I'm going to create the endpoint again and this time create an endpoint for SSM messages and select the corresponding service name. 
I'm going to select the VPC and for high availability, select the two subnets in two different availability zones that we created and then select the security group. And as default, I'm going to leave it for the full access policy and create this endpoint. The endpoints take a couple of minutes to be created and then become available. So I'm going to switch here and you can see that it's in the pending state. Just going to give it a couple of minutes for it to report as available. You can now see that the SSM messages endpoint is now available. So let's switch back to the EC2 console and let's try to connect to the instance again. So I'm going to click on instance, then click on the connect tab. I'm just going to give the instance a quick reboot. So let me select the instance and then click on connect. And you can see that the connect tab now appears. So I did have some trouble in order to connect to session manager right after the endpoint was created. So I did have to give the instance a quick reboot and then I was good to connect to the instance. Alternatively, if you do not want to reboot the instance, you can also just restart the SSM agent on the instance if you do have RDP access on the instance. So now that we're here, let me click on connect. And you can see that I'm now connected to the Windows PowerShell on the instance. So I could run a quick PowerShell command such as hostname and I can see the hostname that's listed. So now we've demonstrated how you can use VPC interface endpoints uh, for SSM, particularly creating the SSM, EC2 messages and SSM messages endpoint and the usages for each of these endpoints. I hope this helps. Before we conclude, there is one other thing that I wanted to just mention about the endpoints. So like I said earlier, when you create the endpoint, you can select the subnets where the interfaces for the endpoints get created. If you take the example of the SSM endpoint, you can click on subnets and then you can see the two interfaces that were created for this particular endpoint. So you can click on the interface and that will take you to the network interfaces tab. But also back on this console, you can see the private IPs that are associated with these two endpoints. Thanks for watching. For more such content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Unmask It Now. Until next time.